grazing is a journey, it really isn't a fixed recipe. And I guess what I want to try and share with you today is that often when we, when we move into more adaptive, multi paddock grazing type systems, um, often when we first start out, and maybe we were set stocking, and maybe we've, we've closed some of those gates that James talked about, and we're going from field to field, and it's still quite a loose rotation. But often what we fall into is a trap of trying to be too prescriptive with our grazing. Um, I know that when I started, it was, you know, you kind of graze a third, leave a third, trample a third, and you've kind of got very prescriptive how often you're moving your animals or how big your paddocks are. Um, and really, I think what we, what we all need to go through is a process of learning and iterative development of our grazing systems. You know, I kind of used to just talk about grazing and I used to just wang on about, you know, why it's important to do mob grazing stuff. But increasingly, I really, really feel it's getting more and more important that we understand our financial position. We can only stay in business as rural communities if we understand our finances and we start to value the, the kind of financial implications of the decisions that we make on farm. And so many of us that either go through transition or start farming in this way are so much more profitable as a result of doing this and as I said earlier pasture for life farms are eight times more pro up to seven to eight times more profitable than their conventional counterparts in England and Scotland we know that we see that but you're never going to believe it unless you have a go at it on your own farm 